don't want to set these on the chest freezer. Wife gets mad. It's worth noting I have already turned the fuel off. And after doing so, I did drain the float bowl on the carburetor. So there shouldn't be too much fuel, if any, in here. There's the top of the engine. Valves are underneath this. I need to clean all of this up before I take it off. Because I don't want any of this dirt to be falling down inside of my engine. I'll spend a little bit more time um, cleaning that up before I pull that cover off. Um, I already have a, a shim kit coming. It's not going to get here till tomorrow, so today's just the, the prep work. So this is going to be a two-part video for me for a one-part video for you. Got to remove the breather tube. Okay, everything else is disconnected. Now it's just a matter of getting these three bolts off. Breaking the seal on the, on the uh, gasket. It's like the gasket is still in really good shape, actually. I don't see any metal flaking or anything. This thing looks really, really good. All right, here's the top of your engine. This is the camshaft. There's your two exhaust valves. Your compression valves are underneath where this lobe and this lobe are. Is your cam chain, that's your cam chain gear. So what we need to do now is we need to set the engine at top dead center. Top dead center allows the two exhaust uh, rocker arms to be uh, free, not putting any tension on the exhaust valve springs. And it doesn't put any, it, it, it gets the, there's, I don't know if you can see them here, but there's a lobe here and a lobe here on the uh, camshaft. They will be kind of facing up to allow you to take the proper measurement and get the correct measurement. Now, it is worth noting, you need to do this when the engine is cold. If it's warm, you're gonna get the wrong reading. You want to take your 10 mil Allen wrench and take this cover off and that allows you to access the crankshaft. This is the camshaft up top. This is the crankshaft down here and it's going to have, I'll show you when I get this off, it's going to have a little mark on it that you line up with, a, with this arrow. I don't know if you can see that arrow right there, but it has a mark on there that you line up with that arrow. Okay, and this cap has a little O-ring on it in there you just want to inspect it really quick looks like it's in pretty good shape it's worth noting that i have not drained the oil out of this you don't need to do that to do this that gear that's in there is going to have a mark on it and they don't want to line up with that arrow you'll know that you're on the compression stroke when the these rockers right here you'd be able to move them they'll be loose and this lobe and this lobe will be facing up and away so right now we're on the exhaust stroke. See that dot that has a little white paint on it in there? You may not be able to see it. That's difficult to see. Here's the lobes I was talking about on the camshaft right there and right there. And this one, technically. Now there is a little bit of play in the exhaust valves. This is where you need to be to check your valve clearance. Before you measure, set up your pen and paper. You need to write down your measurements, and I'll explain why here in a minute. You have four valves, two exhaust, two compression. It's also worth noting that you really should have the uh, service manual, at least the owner's manual for this. Um, service manual is going to give you the proper specs to set everything to. Now, the intake valves, which are on this side, they have a stock value of 0 .006 plus minus... 0 0.001 so I can go to a 7 or I can go to a 5. I don't have a 0 006 feeler gauge so I'm using a, a 4 and a 2 put together. Does go there but it does not go on the left side which is as I suspected. Now you need to find out what will go. So I'm going to go I'm going to go in 0 0.001 increments until I find one that goes in. I'm also going to go in 0 .001 increments to make sure this one isn't too loose. So I want to do a 7, so that would be a 4 and a 3. Math, right? You get to do math today! 7 does not go, so it is not too loose. 
That's perfect. Right side is good. Now, instead of the six, I'm gonna do a five and see if the five goes. I'm guessing that it won't. Yep, won't go. Now, to figure out what shim you I will need, I do have to figure out what is gonna go because I need that number. So now I've done five, now I'm gonna check four. I don't need to go larger because I already know that six isn't gonna go. And the four does go. So I'm 0 .001 off. So I need to go one shim larger on the left side. Right side's okay. Now we're gonna check the exhaust valves. And these are supposed to be 0 .011 plus minus 001. If, if you've never used feeler gauges before, when you put them in there, you want to have the feeler gauge clean for one, so you don't have any grit or anything built up on there. And when you put it in, you want to feel just a little bit of drag on both sides. So the exhaust valves are good. I don't need to worry about those. The right side intake valve is good. The left, take, the left side intake valve is not. I will say that to prepare for doing this job, I did watch... Uh, more than a few valve adjustment videos. Every single one of those videos on the 450X and R and L, it's all the same engine, just different cam camshafts in them. And if it's older, the R will have titanium valves in it. This has steel. Every one of those videos, it was the left side intake valve that was too tight. Every single one. So that leads me to believe there's something going on with the with the engineering of the engine or something. It's just odd that every single time somebody does a valve adjustment, it is always, without fail, 100% the left side intake valve. So fortunately, they're easy to do. So now I know which valve I need to change. Now I just need to do the math to figure out which shim I need. I should just need to go one shim larger, but I won't know that for sure until I get the camshaft off and measure the shim that's in there. Um, and I need that measurement to do the math. And we're gonna go through that right now. Left exhaust, good. Right exhaust, good. Right intake, good. Left compression or intake was 0 0.004 was the first one I could get to go. That means that is one step out of OEM spec and two steps from perfect. I don't want to get it to minimum spec. I want to get it to actual OEM, like nuts on good. So that's what I'm going to do. So you need to write down that number of the, of the first measurement that you got the feeler gauge to go on. You will need this number to do the math to find out what size shim to put in to correct it. Now, one of the things you're going to need to do before you take the camshaft and the camshaft gear out, is you're gonna to have to release the tension on the cam chain. That is done right here. This is the cam chain tensioner. We're gonna take this eight millimeter bolt out. That will allow me to get a very small flat blade screwdriver in there. And this is an auto tensioner. And I will turn it to back the tensioner off. And while holding it, I will undo these two bolts and the whole thing's gonna slip out, releasing the tension on the cam chain. And this little bolt ends up being just like a cap. You might get a little bit of oil seepage coming out of this while you're doing this, no big deal. Feels like an excessive amount of threads just for such a small thing. Now while you're holding the tensioner, you're just gonna pull this out. And when you release this, when you release the screwdriver, see that, watch. See, spring loaded, pop. Now that the tension on the cam chain is released, see how it's, it can wiggle now, see that? Now we're gonna undo these four bolts, which hold down the carriers and carrier bearings for the camshaft. You wanna do it in a crisscross pattern, just a couple of turns each time to be able to release pressure evenly on the material they're screwed into. If you don't do that, you can mess stuff up. Okay, they are all loose. Now, one thing that does matter is you wanna keep these in order. Rear bolts stay in the rear, front bolts stay in the front. Keep left on left, right on right. Anytime you're removing stuff from the top of the engine, you wanna make double sure you're not dropping stuff down into the engine, like the shims. I was hoping I was gonna be able to do this without having to pull the cam gear off. It doesn't look like that's gonna be the case, however. To get the cam gear off, there's one of the bolts, and the other bolt is behind here. 
Now, I don't want to move anything. So to get to that second bolt that's behind here, I will have just enough space if I remove this motor mount right here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I believe on the R, the carriers for the cam are split. So you can do all this without having to take the gear off. We can't do that. So now we have to figure out a way to undo that gear without moving the engine. We're gonna do this a more difficult way. I'm gonna hold the crankshaft on the other side, reaching over while I, un while I crack these loose, get it back to top dead center, and then uh, remove the bolts. I'm going to stick a screwdriver through here so the chain can't drop down into the engine. Do not let the chain drop into the engine, otherwise you're taking your engine apart to grab it and get it back out. Also, do not let the bolts fall into the engine. Don't, don't, don't. Otherwise you're taking your engine apart to grab the bolts. Right there, there's a little punch mark. That has to line up with an arrow that's in the molded onto the case for the timing. And I'll make double sure that I do that when uh, I put everything back on. I put two of the camshaft carrier bolts back in, just, just finger tight, just to hold that camshaft carrier there so it doesn't wobble around and wiggle while I'm getting that uh, cam gear off. So the gear doesn't have to come out. It just has to come off of the camshaft. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some bailing wire and wire this up to the frame so it can't fall in as soon as I get this other bolt out. And there's the carrier. See those shims? They're stuck on there with little oil. These are shim buckets that are in here. So I'm going to get those shims out of there and I'm going to keep them separate, left versus right. Um, when you're taking this out, make very certain that that does not fall down into the engine. Big, bad mess. That is how a shim sits on top of the valve. It's right there. This is the culprit, is that shim right there. I'm gonna measure that, find out what its measurement is. Now, with the offending shim out, <clears throat> you wanna wipe it off and make sure it's absolutely clean. That's the one shim we gotta measure. And we're gonna measure it with a micrometer. The offending little bugger measures a 0.071. I'm gonna write down that number. Now, we're gonna take these two numbers to figure out what shim I need to use. You used to tell your mom all the time, math will be worthless. Well, guess what? Your formula is A equals B minus C plus D. A is the new shim thickness. So we need to find that out, right? So B is the recorded valve clearance. 0 0.004. C equals the specified valve clearance. Specified valve clearance for this is 0 0.006. D is the old shim thickness, 0 0.071. We're going to use these th three numbers to figure out what shim I need to use. And by the way, my shim kit just got here in the mail today. I did the measurements in inches, so now I'm gonna convert my numbers to millimeters. See, we're really having to do math now, convert millimeters, so I'm using a uh, converter thing. So 004 inches is 0 0.10 millimeters. 006 inches is 0 0.15, 0 0.071, 1.80. Now we're gonna use those three numbers to figure out our measurements in millimeters. We take the recorded valve clearance, 0 0.10, minus specified valve clearance, 0 0.15. We add to the number we get from these two, the old shim thickness. Now we're adding 1.8. There is my new shim thickness. I need a 1.75 shim. We want to take the new shim and put it right down on top of the valve, just like that. Then you want to take some of the oil that's in there, rub it on top of the shim, get it lubricated. You want to do that with the others as well. Now it's time to put everything back together. Okay, now comes everybody's least favorite part. So you don't want to overdo this. That fits in there just like it should now. That still fits in there. Outstanding. You guys saw me take all this stuff apart, so I'm not going to make you sit through me putting it back together. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Valve adjustment, 
done reshimmed done you saw it right there i've i mean i've had the tank off for a day i had the carburetor drained the only thing i did was turn the fuel on and wait a minute for it to fill up the float bowl and i started that without the choke i was able to finally get the idle adjusted down without the bike dying as well so it's finally idling lower the throttle response is fantastic. It's not backfiring anymore. That's how you do a valve adjustment on a 2016 CRF 450X. And this bike was the same for about 10 years. So it's gonna be the, to do the valves anyway, it's gonna be the same on the, on the R, on the X, on the L for about 10 years at least. That's how you get that done. It's all about the shims, man. It's all about the shims.